Mimi founded the Bay Area Citizens for Sustainable Liberty on July 4th, 2011, the anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Having lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, she recognized that San Francisco was ground zero for an assault on property rights in, in the form of one Bay Area, Plan Bay Area, a 25-year plan professed to be needed by government to achieve housing, transportation, and land use vision. Um, you can read the rest of her bio there, but let's hear from Mimi Steele. Thank you. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Plan Bay Area because you can basically take the name and insert any other regional plan, and it's exactly the same thing. Um, but it's a top-down central plan. It's a 25-year plan. I always like to point out that the Soviets only had five-year plans. Um, it's a regional plan, and in California, it includes uh, land use, mass transportation, and allocates housing, and that's by uh, state law, SB 375, that unfortunately was signed by a Republican, theoretically, a Republican Governor Schwarzenegger. Um, and it's been flying under the radar. The, the um, stakeholders know all about it, but uh, most average citizens don't. And that's my next point. They are counting on three things, your apathy, your ignorance, and your isolation. Because even if you know about this, if you're the only one that shows up and it's all stakeholders, they'll ramrod you. You won't have an opportunity to really make a comment. So I always say, let's give tyranny a chance. Um, if, you, if you had any question about what was going on, if you look at the last regional report from uh, Plan Bay Area, um, you will see that they, uh, it, Plan Bay Area is the name of the plan, but their website is onebayarea.org. And if you had any questions about what's really going on here, you can just look at this uh, chart and see that basically they think it's one Bay Area. Now there's nine counties, 101 cities, <clears throat> and we go anywhere from massive urban area like, uh, like San Francisco, obviously, all the way out to dairy farms and wineries and things like that. And yet they're trying to do cookie cutter approach to the whole thing. Regionalism, I call regionalism the road to ruin. And it, you, again, this is from their annual report where they, they bought a building in downtown San Francisco. They have a perfectly fine one over in Oakland, but they bought a $170 million building in San Francisco, and that's not even the refurbishment cost, so obviously that's gonna go up, but they want a presence, and they want the local governments to know that they're there, and actually that they're in charge. So a lot of people don't really understand how critical regionalism is to this whole process, and what the effects are. I found a document from the University of Wisconsin Law School, and it talked about the promise and perils of the new regionalist approach to sustainable development. And they basically say in the table of contents that new regionalism is a response to failures of local government. I didn't know that. And it's a new form of governance. Very, very bad stuff. Um, this is a direct quote from there. It says, new regionalism is a new form of governance to enhance distributive justice. Everything you read about in all of these plans has to do with social justice, distributive justice, wealth redistribution, as Stanley Kurtz would say. Um, this came from a Department of Transportation mega regions report, report in 2011, and it basically says the same thing I was telling you. New regionalism proposes an institutional shift from governance, government to governance and emphasizes public and private sector partnerships, joint ventures, the emergence of multi-level governance may provide a framework for governing mega-regions. Pretty disturbing stuff when you actually understand what that means. Regional government is not self-government, and Charles Cagnon in the back there, raise your hand, Charles, he came up with that expression. He lives in San Francisco, and he's been very active in our group. And Self-governance, which you will hear the term a lot, is not self-government. So where are we here? We're essentially through these uh, transportation and land use plans and regional plans, we're essentially changing our form of government in a stealth re re way and nobody understands that. Nobody is making a comment about that or even protesting it. And so this is a comment that somebody made earlier in, in the conference, and I thought it was really good. We either restore local government or we submit to global governance. <clears throat> 
And the way they're going to accomplish this is um, a nudge, shove, and we're at the shove stage in the Bay Area because people are now awake and they are protesting and the planners are not very happy campers. And I always like to say, build it and we will force you to come. Now how are they going to force you to come? Well, they have this thing called the Land Use Transportation Policy Toolbox, and you can see all of their tools here. I like to call this the toolbox of tyranny. And uh, they had five different plans that they proposed to, uh, to us peons to choose from, and uh, this happens to be their preferred plan. And I don't really have time to go into all of these. I would be happy to talk to you about them later, but they follow the same template. They want to force a change in your behavior. Okay, Randall, I need you, so wait, before you hit the button, um, what I want to talk about here is what we did was we started out actually with a bunch of Tea Party and 912 groups, and we went around to eight of the nine counties of the Bay Area, we skipped San Francisco because we figured that was a lost cause, and um, we, uh, we trained people on, and the, the training was two aspects, one was, it was called a tactical training class, and half of the training was uh, what Plan Bay Area was and what the implications were. And the other half of the training was training in what's called the Delphi technique. It's also called the charrettes. And it's used, it's group manipulation is basically what it is. And there's a great book by Bev Eklund that you can get um, and read about it. You really need to know about it. And you really, if you're going to protest this stuff, you really need to train your people in what this is and how to counter it. So this is a little video. We always travel with a videographer. We do our own videotape. After this session, and you'll see why, the official videographer of the, of the visioning sessions was heard to comment that the, the video of this, he was not going to show the light of day because we had people in there who were knowledgeable and questioning. And I think the, um, the facilitators actually got up and they were almost in tears. So Randall, go ahead and zap that for me. And this is a short version. This went on for almost two hours. What we had envisioned and what MTC and ABAC had envisioned in terms of complying with AB32 and SB 375. So until we hear otherwise, that's what we're doing in these meetings and, and very much uh, need to get some input to provide for the commissioners and the ABAC board members. Unfortunately, because we have a fairly packed program, we can't be fielding all of the questions that this would be raising. But those kind of questions, those kind of comments are exactly what we want to read about on those worksheets. We can't change it, is what she's telling him. He's asking a question. Feeling comfortable with these choices, you, you don't have to participate in the exercise. Don't participate. And I would encourage you all to hold your questions until the end. We're going to lead us into a next uh, exercise to try to get more of your ideas. There were about ten questions that kept asking him, and he refused to answer. She's a stakeholder. So that, that's really a specific period of time this morning to meet. We're already at the 1030 uh, point. We would like to get through this. We want to feel we, this was not designed to field all your questions. It wasn't. And for that, I will talk to you a lot of things that we don't agree with. Then don't vote on them. If this process is not helpful for you, then please write that down on your comment form and tell us what it would be. But start at the 30,000 foot level, the division, and it's not grounded in realities at the bottom, yeah, exactly. then you're going to end up with answers to your questions that create a false vision that can never be implemented.
Thank you. These are the sorts of things that we want to be able to hear from you all this morning. So I'm going to turn it back to the facilitator who can lead us through the next exercise. Everybody here knows this is not a government. Okay. It's by the Silicon Valley Manufacturers Association. I thought this was a government meeting. Okay. Actually, it's actually a, a private foundation with a lot of these somewhat biased groups. Right. We have a lot of definitely as biased. It's not answer my question, not answer any of our other questions. Which is okay. Okay, so um, you can see there that they, uh, they want you to write your questions down and uh, don't answer it. I mean, this was really the first time anybody ever challenged these people, and they were completely flummoxed. They had no idea what to do. Um, we, uh, I'll, I'll get into more, uh, more of that later, but make sure you have somebody videotaping this stuff because people wouldn't believe it. If I, told, if I explained to you what this thing was like, you'd sit there and say, no, you're full of baloney. Okay, so... Um, the care and feeding of uh, planners and their elected officials. What you need to understand is that planners are, are trained by the American Planning Association. They've all bought into this smart growth, sustainable development stuff. Um, most elected officials either um, uh, are honestly just don't have a clue and they listen to their planners um, or, uh, or they're really, they've really bought into some of this stuff. So it's really important that you understand where they're coming from and this is even at the local level. Um, so um, I call it calling out the cowards and um, uh, let's help them grow a spine because what ends up happening is know your NGOs. These are the stakeholders that show up at these meetings and when they show up and the elected officials are confronted with something like this, what are they going to do? They're going to buckle to this and they're going to ignore the taxpayers because the taxpayers are not there. And I was talking to somebody earlier, you know, most of these people have the meetings during the day. So if you're working for a living to pay for all this crap, which by the way, you're funding these people. Um, you, you, you're, you're going to lose. And I always say government goes to those who show up. So it's really critical that you get people informed and, and available and out there and showing up. Um, research, looking for love in all the wrong places, the right places. I mean, this is all of the language that they use, and I'm not going to go over it. But what you really need to do is go beyond the rhetoric. This all sounds great, and to the average person that just listens to it, and when they frame the polls, they always focus on how great all of this stuff is going to be. What you really need to understand is the reality. We work with a cartoonist, and this is one of the cartoons that he came up with. I suggested this. This is the American dream, the soccer mom loading all the stuff in the car, and this is her with a bicycle the sustainable green nightmare. You take something like this and put it on a flyer and go to soccer games and ask the, ask the soccer moms how they like the new uh, smart growth ideas. Um, so the magic of messaging, that's really the key here. And um, we, I, th I think it's important that you frame everything in terms of it's your backyard. This is what's going to happen to you. This is not something on some high level. This is how you're going to be impacted. Um, and the, the messaging that we came up with that really resonated with everybody was loss of local control. So when I started this whole process, um, you know, we talked about, uh, but this is part of the slides that I used when I was explaining to, to Tea Party groups what was going on. The, this plan is control at the regional, state, and federal level, and it's the loss of local control. So there's no grassroots governments, government. Um, I'm using the wrong term. So. What really turned the corner for us was when we started getting the messaging better and when the liberals joined the fight. And we have Marin County, it's a very, very liberal area. Many of the people in our coalition self-identify as being to the left of Barack Obama, if you can believe that, and they're against this. And when we first contacted them, you know, they were doing some work on the sides in their communities, but they didn't understand the regional thing. And when I first contacted them, they said, well, we don't want to be associated with the Tea Party. And uh, we don't want to be associated with Agenda 21. And so my message to them is we are about local control and this is going to impact local control. And what Marin does with local control might be completely different than what Alameda County does with local control, but the point is you're in control. And so uh, we were joined finally after a long series of conversations by, uh, by a bunch of very liberal groups in Marin. It's called Citizen Marin is the umbrella organization.
she actually was feeding us information and we had a protest outside of one of their Democrat um, fundraisers. And so it's really great because they're, they understand now what the impact is of this in their area and they're very, very active. Um, they're writing in the Marin Independent Journal which is a very influential paper in the area. Um, leveraging language. One of the people who's a member of CAPER in the uh, San Diego area, her name is Mary Baker, she teamed with um, Wendell Cox and wrote a document called Dimensions of Sustainability, which is online or I can send it to you. And basically Wendell's uh, position was the, the term sustainability is in the language. You have to deal with it. So you can't say I'm against sustainability because the, the, the reality is the term is there. So how do you reframe sustainability in terms that get people to think about what's really happening. And so they've got five different, four or five different dimensions of sustainability. One of them is financial sustainability. Another one is economic growth. So if you take a look at that, it helps you frame the issues in terms of the language that's being used by the planners and by the local city officials with our spin on it. <clears throat> The other thing about language is every time they show something like uh, like sprawl, what do they show? They show you this, right? And everybody goes, oh, golly, I don't really want to sit in traffic. Well, we've got another version of sprawl. And again, we could do this on every single uh, term that's used, but I just use this as an example. This is what they show for sprawl. I like to point out that this is sprawl here. This is sprawl, suburbia. This is anti-sprawl. And what really pissed them off is that we started calling anti-sprawl stack and pack. Oh my goodness, how could you use that term? That's so, that's so damaging. Uh, we call it stack and pack, we call it human kennels. We think of as many things as we can to be as derogatory as we can about their position. And it gets people talking and it gets people thinking about what are we really doing here? <clears throat> uh, so tools of the trade, um, I have a website. The website is Bay Area Liberty. Um, you can see here, don't let the sun set on liberty in the Bay Area. That's my little phrase there. Um, join the opposition coalition. You can go to my thing and you can get on my free email list. And I've got people from all over the country. I'm a 912 member and we network. It's really important to network with other groups and find out what they're doing. Notice regional government is not self-government. And then your community, your future, that was another message that we talked about. And we talked about regional of unelected officials are controlling your life was basically what it said. Um, and then, um, so uh, I do email marketing. I happen to use a program called Constant Contact. There are other programs out there. But it allows you to set things up and put some nice graphics in and put some links in. Um, and I'm sending, I have my email list uh, set up by county. So if there's something that's unique to a particular county, I can send it out just to them. Or if it's something that includes the whole Bay Area, I can send it out to the whole Bay Area. Um, this is our YouTube channel. I would highly encourage you to get a YouTube channel. It's free. Um, you can upload videos. You can like uh, you, they'll tell you popular videos, it does, doesn't show here, but you can like videos on other people's YouTube channels. And so it's a place where people can go. And that video that I showed you um, is like a two minute version of a 10 minute video that's on my website. And then my friend who's the actual videographer, his name is Steve Kemp, he's got a website which is YouTube backslash Tea Party Television. And if you go to that website, you will see he publishes the full length version of all of these meetings. And what I do, I've learned video editing, I, do, I take his videos and I go in and I, I make like two to five minute segments because most people don't have time to watch the whole thing. But I can always back it up and show them I didn't take it out of context. So that's really important to do. Um, I, I developed a relationship with a woman named Barbara Simpson. She's a talk show host on a conservative channel. I started by sending her emails and letters and finally I sent her something that resonated with her and she said, okay, I'll have you on for 15 minutes. Well, two hours later, um, we had this conversation. She's really about the only one in the Bay Area that's really picked up this issue. And she covers similar topics. So, and I always um, tape her programs and then I put those up on the YouTube channel as well. You know you've made it when the Berkeley Daily Planet says that Plan Bay Area is a shocking theft of our democracy. Who'd have thunk, right? So we got, uh, you have to build a coalition and the coalition we, we are at right now, 40 plus members from, uh, organization members from all across the spectrum, right, left, center, 
declined to state. Um, we do a lot of writing in the patch, the local patch. This is one of my ladies. She's a grandma, and she gets up there, and she gives those guys the what for. And she's got her own little blog, but we also write articles in the patch. The patch tends to be relatively liberal in the Bay Area. It's a good way to get, get an opposing message out. Um, <clears throat> we do flyers, and we do special meetings. You know, I'm in favor of, of uh, being really radical here. Your home is in danger. I mean, let's lay it out. Your home is in danger. Free public meeting, preserving our homes and our land. Um, we also started this thing called a citizen's town hall. And this is really effective because the politicians weren't doing town halls. And they weren't educating people on what was going on. And so we started going to different areas. This is after the Tea Party. I mean, the Tea Party really, and 912 groups, really formed the initial core of our of our group, but as we got more sophisticated, as we started reach, reaching out, we reached out to people, whoops, back up, hang on, Randall. Um, we, we reached out to people with, um, oh, wait a minute, okay, with, um, in, in different towns, again, Los Gatos, Saratoga, that's a relatively affluent town, very liberal town in the Silicon Valley, and, and the message was, why do you live there? Well, you live there because they got good schools and all this other great, unique care of your town, and regional officials who do not live in your town want to change that. And so that was really good messaging. And ur it urbanizes your town. That's a great messaging. Or it Manhattanizes your town. That's a great message for, uh, for people Brooklyn. in suburban areas. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Bro okay. Um, so come out and find out why this is uh, imminent without your uh, input. And that's how we start recruiting people. Okay, so this was um, a video. I have to, full disclosure here, the woman who is singing, she, she gets up and she gets so frustrated with these politicians that she sings to them. And she's done this multiple times and she's had her microphone cut off a couple times. In full disclosure, she didn't have her microphone cut because of what she was saying. They all had given us one minute and this was on July 18th when they actually approved the plan. So, um, so hit it, Randall. Just a little prompt here, I looked up some facts. Oh, due to full great bureaucrat, he claims to speak for me. A lowly sir, hardly a work. He <laughs> American utopia for those who know the key. He'll crown all day in the beltway, and the rest get nothing. <laughs> What she says is, to live where we would like you see, we call this liberty. Now I have to get off the stage, so I just uh, we are going to be on uh, Glenn Beck's uh, For the Record show tomorrow night, um, and I just want to end with this. Um, Mark Levin, Ren Wendell Cox uh, wrote an article about um, California is killing suburbia, and uh, about a, two years ago, and. Uh, Mark Levin read that article, and he went off on this article. And this is his little rant. I'll just uh, Obamacare, inflation, health care, the local zoning like this in the state of California. Just think about it. You won't have to make any decisions for yourself. You know how many of you work in little cubicles? Now you'll live in little cubicles. You don't want to be private health care. The government will decide what you get and what you don't get. This is Thomas More's utopia. Folks, this is tyranny looking you in the eyes. I'd love to put a smiling face on this. I really would. But there's nothing to smile about. This is coming to the rest of America, too. No question about it. We're not running out of land. We're not running out of natural resources. We're running out of liberty. We're running out of private property. The government just keeps pushing us around, coercing us. 
whether it's your local, you know, city, township, county, with their zoning rules, which are out of control, or your state, which piles on top of the federal government with the, uh, the phony environmental laws and so forth, and of course the federal government, which we've talked about at North. The government comes between you and your private property uh, endlessly, not just through taxation and regulation, but through zoning, control of the automobile, and so much more. I don't have an answer right now, folks, but I'm going to tell you what's happening in California is going to spread east and do it fast. So the bottom line is liberty is not at the table. And we have to put liberty at the table. And I call ourselves a community organizing for the Constitution because nobody else is. Thank you very much. Uh, you are under attack.